GOP considers bumpfire ban, or I like this one better. Why the GOP are a bunch of surrender monkeys? Because you see, the GOP is calling for hearings on bump stocks. And those hearings are really about gauging power to advance power of the state. If you're watching the video, you can see the graphic right there that says, may we offer you this olive branch? Take our bump stocks, please. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's Jimmy Kimmel, the crying gun grabber, and uh, Kathy McMorris Masters. Yeah. Those are, excuse me, <laughs> Masters, Kathy McMorris Rogers. My name is Paul Gordon. I am with iState.tv. And this is your iTalk for today. So, the alleged champions of the Second Amendment, the Republicans, appear ready to seize on a placation move to attempt to appease the shrill calls of celebrities like Jimmy Kimmel, the crying gun grabber of state-run media, which is the MSM, and authoritarian progressive political leaders that are all calling for something to be done about this gun violence. That's right, man. We got to do, we got to do something about this gun violence, man. It's, it's, it's out of, it's out of control. Now, rather than stand defiant on one of the most critical issues for liberty, the fundamental right to self-defense, the Republicans are looking to find a way out of having to face the withering rage, the histrionic tears, the accusations of murder enabler by the gun grabbers a group of state-worshipping sycophants hell-bent on assuring the state has a complete and total control of the monopoly on violence. A lovely bunch of people, aren't they? Just to, when, when you really, when you break it down to who and what they really are and what they absolutely represent, you, you cannot help but look at them with utter contempt. These cowards have identified an area, and by cowards, I'm referring to the GOP leaders here. They've identified an area of gun control they think they can surrender on, imagining somehow that this would really quiet the fanatic, frothing frenzy of the gun-grabbing zealots. Newsflash. That would be a big nope on that hope. So Representative... Kathy McMorris Rogers. Uh, oh, oh, let me go to the let me go to the picture here. There we go. You see that that is Kathy McMorris Rogers right there. So Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers, the chair of the House Republican Caucus, telegraphed where the Republicans are going when she told one of the state media outlets, ABC News, we are talking to ATF. We are talking to others. What is this device? How exactly it works? And if it has the effect of being a machine gun, whether or not that should be allowed, ooh, or masters are going to decide if we're allowed to have the same kind of freaking stuff they have, or who should have access to these types of weapons. Yes, there you go. And there you go, and there you go. The Republicans are looking into the possibility of banning bump fire slide fire stocks. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure they're running to their constituents right now, running to the NRA and checking to see if their constituents and the NRA and other gun lobby groups, which are really just controlled opposition, don't kid yourselves, don't waste your money on the NRA, will give them a pass in the hope of appeasing this latest round of histrionics from the frothing, fanatic, frenzied gun grabber gang. Oh, I like that. Yes, gun grabber gang. So in addition to this cowardly person, Senate 
Majority Whip John Cornyn joined joined Kathy on on the couch, so to speak. Joined her in the chorus of appeasement when he said about the possibility of banning bump stocks. Bump stocks. I'll put that in quotes. Bump stocks. That holding a hearing would at least be <clears throat> worthwhile. Now, meanwhile, one of the people who represents the state that I live in, Paul Gordon, I live in the state of Pennsylvania. Senator Pat Toomey threw his hat in the surrender monkey ring when he told the state media, well, I am generally skeptical of banning firearms accessory or firearms accessories outright. I am certainly open to Congress holding hearings to learn more about bump stocks and related matters. And, of course, the always faithful progressive Senator uh, Lindsey Graham echoed support for such hearings, as did the other faithful progressive GOP senators, Susan Collins, John Thune, Jeff Flake, and Ron Johnson. But I would be remiss, would I not, if I were to not represent the other side of the aisle? I mean, I want to be freaking fair and balanced here, right? I don't really want to be fair and balanced, but let's pretend I do. A Democratic representative and stalwart gun grabber, Seth Moulton, from the People's Republic of Massachusetts, said of the possibility of these hearings, To be honest, I don't know how many innocent Americans have to die before our Republican leadership is willing to even just have a debate on this issue, let alone a vote. I know that I'm working behind the scenes with Republicans, with colleagues of mine, who are willing to cross the aisle on this, who are going to push their own leadership to bring these issues up for a debate and a vote, and we're going to try to get some things done. Okay. Anytime a politician speaks, I could I could go into the... Uh, I can go into a little degoving, and you know, in this case, I think it's time. I think it's time for a little degoving here of this gun grabber leader statement. Now, now, previously, I just want to let you know, previously, okay, I use this right here, this hat. This was the power. This is my, my psychedelic hat that gives me super psychedelic powers. Uh, don't try this at home. I am a professional psychedelic, so please don't try this at home. But, but the, the, this is a little flawed when I enter into... When I enter into that mode of 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 degoving, I actually feel like I'm becoming one of them. So so a friend of mine uh, went to the mountains of Tibet and consulted some uh, some really really uh, like highly spiritual weird guru dudes that just sit up on the mountains and and om all day for like uh, twenty hours a day, and uh, they, they came up with a new tool for me. And this tool, what it does is, I still get, now I don't get all of the psychedelic powers, but what I do get is I do get the degoving psychedelic powers. And you, as you can see, you, you're, you're not going to see it because I use a green screen and it's got some yellow in it, so the yellow kind of disappears. But that's perfect. That actually adds to the effect that I'm looking for. Anyway, this this particular tool, and I'm, I'm going to change my, my camera view here. I want to make sure you see this. So this particular tool this will give me the power to degov, and because it looks so silly and ridiculous, and I feel the silliness and the ridiculous within me, it will protect me from entering too deeply into the mind of the very scary, very, 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 very scary uh, a gov mind. And remember, the gov mind is a gov mind that imagines that you know a few hundred people could somehow orchestrate and engineer plans that could determine how 300 plus million people govern their lives so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and uh hold on it's this takes it's it's a bit of a proceeding here it's the first time i've done this on on uh on camera but i got it uh, there we go there we go all right now we are ready we are ready i'm feeling it feeling it okay here we go I will continue to tug on the emotional heartstrings of the sheeple and spread false narratives that there is some sort of epidemic of gun violence in America when I know full well there is not. 
I know there are a number of surrender monkeys in the GOP, and I also know at the end of the day, we're all really one party. So I'm convinced if I pull the how many Americans must die card, I might get a few Republicans to go along with this. If we can get enough GOPers to go along with this bump fire ban, that's going to open up a whole lot of doors that are going to get us closed closer to removing guns from non-government agents so we can assure that only the state from which I derive my power, my livelihood, can use lethal force to assure that these sheeple do the kinds of things that benefit my well-being, my prosperity, my power. <laughs> and you know, I, 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 I think it worked. I feel... I, I didn't feel like I was, uh, I, I didn't feel the urge to vote. I didn't feel the urge to uh, well up with tears when someone played the national anthem. Uh, I, thank you, you spiritual weird guru dudes from Tibet. And thank you, my friend who, uh, I, I won't name who the friend was, but uh, risk life and limb. To, 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 to fetch that, that, that powerful tool for me so that I could help you, the audience, better understand what, 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 when they speak in gov, what they're really saying. So let me address this, this frenzied, frothy, fanatical, gun grabbers, plaintive cry of, how many people have to die before we do something? Let's break down these gun violence numbers in a way that uh, that little children like the gun grabbers can understand. First, let's deal with that big number those self-righteous frothers like to trot out. So around 30,000 people per year die as a result of wounds inflicted with guns. And I want to make, uh, that's a very purposeful phrase that I use there. Wounds inflicted with guns. Now, they want you to focus on the 30,000 and have that be the number for gun violence. But even, even at that, let's just assume that all of those people died as a result of random gun violence like we saw in Las Vegas. That number is about 0. .0009% of the population of the U.S., which is around 320 million people. So let's compare that number to the amount of people who died as a result of car crashes every year. Now, that number is about 35,000. Yes, even if you take that figure of 30,000 at face value, even if you're going to say, yep, this is what gun violence, this is the gun violence number, more people died in car accidents than they do as a result of wounds inflicted with guns. Now, remember that phrase, wounds inflicted with guns, never mind from gun violence. These figures alone are enough to tell you that the idea that there is some sort of epidemic of gun violence is absolutely balderdash. And I have little doubt that the leaders of the frothy, frenzied, fanatic gun grabber gang know they're slinging some mighty thick fertilizer every time they play the how many people have to die card. But we're not going to let that 30,000 figure just continue to float out there. Let's break that number down even more. Of the 30,000 people who died from wounds inflicted by guns, 65% of them are suicide. That's right. Self-harm is not really a threat to anyone but the person who has chosen to harm themselves. So you can't count those numbers as gun violence. There are there's even more numbers that you have to throw out of consideration of gun violence. For, for instance, 15% of these deaths are from law enforcement. Now, for all you law and order types and I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying if you're a law and order type, okay, you're, you're going to have to throw those numbers out. But even for the left, who seem to trust the government with guns, 
while it continues to not trust non-gov people with guns, you're going to have to throw those numbers out of your gun violence pie as well. I mean, after all, what you're telling us is the government should have guns, but non-government people shouldn't. So you can't count those numbers as gun violence. Now, the percentage of deaths, when you strip away all of the things that really don't add up to gun violence, where individuals are threatened by criminal or mentally ill individuals, and, and this includes mass shootings, it's about 17% meaning about 5,100 people die per year as a result of actual gun violence. Now, that includes mass shootings, okay? Remember that. I wanted to repeat that. This includes these mass shootings. Now, do you know how many civilians have died in the ongoing Syrian civil war? a war the U.S. pretty much engineered and funded and continues to, to take part in through supporting terrorist groups and even dropping their own bombs as well. And let me add, uh, before I actually get to the number, I want to stress that this war that the U.S. was, was instrumental in creating, the U.S. intentionally destabilized the region of Syria and maybe another eye talker, something I'll uh, talk about, maybe why that is. That was orchestrated by the left and supported by the left. The same idiots who are out there crying, little Mr. Jimmy freaking Kimmel, and we'll get to you, buddy. Uh, the same idiots that are out there crying about the 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 the, the sixty dead in in Las Vegas and and yet yeah, it's it, and absolutely it's horrible. It's it's devastating that that. That many people died by this this freaking madman? Those same people, they aren't weeping any tears over the number that I'm about ready to give you. So they need to shut the hell up. Freaking hypocrites. They're very selectively grieving. Very selectively grieving. Maybe, maybe you could say that they're 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 bigots because only American lives matter. What, Syrian lives don't matter, dude? Afghani lives don't matter? Iraqi lives don't matter? Come on. Hashtag Iraqi lives matter. Where's that? Where, where, where's the ILM? Let's, let's bring them out. The Syrian Network for Human Rights reports, and I link to the report in my article, which I will be linking to in both the description and the comments as usual on this video they report that figure to be at 5381 that's th this is civilian deaths and that figure is just for the first half of the year from january to june of 2017 5,381 civilians have been killed by war violence. If you will, war violence. Or I'm going to call it American policy violence. American policy violence. Now, that if you really want to stop gun violence, which uh, American policy violence relies on gun gun and bomb violence, you might want to start with changing U.S. foreign policy, which kills far more people than this alleged epidemic of gun violence does in America. And nobody's really, really, really stopping. You just had a, 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 a action recently where there was a, a move to try to get the to, 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 to try to basically remove the authority of the president to continue the war in Syria. And you know what? It was shot down. A whole lot of Democrats participating in shooting that down. So the fact of the matter is Republicans, they know all this. They know full well that the frothing, frenzied, fanatical gun-grabber gang is knowingly manipulating numbers and exercising extreme histrionics in the form of demonstrations of righteous anger and massive crying tirades like the ones that state media operative Jimmy Kimmel pulled off during the anti-gun political commercial, also called Jimmy Kimmel Live. They all know this. 
I know the power of the state media is not as great as it once was, that they can speak themselves directly to their constituents through social media, that there exists a vast array of alternative media to speak to. But instead, they seem to want to continue to choose the surrender monkey strategy. Now, mark my words. If they manage to ban stock modifications, it will soon become apparent that they can enforce that legislation proactively. It will also soon become apparent that they can't stop these stocks from being manufactured by home-based 3D printers. They will then have to move to go after the very mechanics of the trigger itself. And that, my friends... It's going to get very messy and could have a profound effect, not so much on the guns you have now, but the guns you might be able to have in the near future. So, at this point, one should have little doubt that the Republicans are simply the controlled opposition to the statist progressives that are, by and large, the Democrat Party. They all want the same thing, folks. They want to control the outcomes that assure that they continue to benefit from the sweet deal of being preferred members, the managers of the coercive enterprise, the United States of America. And for the political class, who are largely only managers of the coercive enterprise, they're constantly balancing the cost of coercion with the benefits of coercion. The two parties, they take turns on various issues at serving at being good cop and bad cop. And of course, this serves to placate the anxieties of whatever group is being targeted this time for coercion because because that group is they're given a false hope that even if they lose now, they might reverse the loss later through my votes. I mean, that's essentially what happened with Obamacare. I mean, that was a pretty that was a pretty major assault on your basic liberty. The idea that a small group of people in a tiny little city in America could get together and somehow write all of the rules and regulations on how you engage with someone else to get something as fundamental to your well-being as health care. The idea that a small group could could develop a plan for millions of people to be able to do that effectively is absurd. And it was allowed to stand because in the minds of the of the folks that were against it, they could still resist. And there was never any hope of resistance, as as I think you're seeing. So what you have is this left-right lie, this Democrat-Republican lie, it, it serves to help the managers as a group, and the managers are the whole political class, they get to gauge the degree to which they can push and the degree to which they may have to show temporary restraint or, on occasion, even strategically retreat. So if, if the GOP were truly what it represented itself to be, then these GOP leaders would never consider banning anything in an attempt to stop an epidemic that doesn't exist. Because they have the resources they need to overcome the onslaught of the state media and the, the state entertainment divisions like Jimmy Kimmel Live. But it's not their intent to resist, folks. It's their intent to profit. And you, my friend, are the cash crop. Nothing more. All right. This has been your I Talk of the Day. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv. You saw a little bit of a glimpse there of the article that I use, which I have also linked in the description, the description and the comment above. If you like what you see, be sure you like, share, comment. Make sure you subscribe. And above all else, you want to hit that bell. 
hit that bell right there. See, when I put it over there, it says stop getting notified about every new video. No, no, no. I'm not hitting that bell because right now that bell is active. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's not active. There, it's not active. See that? Now I'm going to go ahead and there you go. I hit that bell. Now I'll get notifications. So you be sure you hit the bell so you know when when we get our next video. Until, until I do my next video, this is Paul Gordon from iState.tv. You have a great day.